Hidden in a series of glacially carved valleys 23 miles south-southeast of Mount St. Helens in the state of Washington is a largely forgotten volcanic system known as the West Crater. At this very spot, a mere 7,700 years ago, a cluster of highly explosive eruptions occurred, leaving behind not only a gaping 1,600-foot-wide crater at a peak known as Bear Mountain, but also a 2.5 square mile lava flow. This lava flow was unlike what is commonly seen at Kilauea or Mauna Loa or even Iceland's Reckonus Peninsula in the last three years. While lava flows from those volcanoes were thin and runny, sometimes moving at speeds of up to 15 miles per hour, the lava flows from the west crater were incredibly slow-moving, viscous, tall, and crumbly. Today, the remnants of this viscous lava flow stand out against the surrounding tree cover, with its source being more densely vegetated due to the ash it ejected. This is the story of Washington's least known volcano, which is one day likely to erupt again. The West Crater Volcanic Complex, despite its name, does not only contain the lava dome which goes by the same name. Instead, it consists of a series of 13 separate volcanic vents over an area of 54 square miles which each erupted once and then never erupted again. The story of this volcanic field began 360,000 years ago at a point 1600 feet northwest of the Soda Peaks. At the time, a recently expanded zone of weakness had formed linked the Cascade Mountain Range which allowed magma to ascend through the crust. This magma subsequently reached the surface, generating an explosion, and low-viscosity basaltic lava emerged. During what was a brief four-day-long eruption, 250 acres were covered in a thin layer of molten rock. The next eruption occurred 20,000 years later when magma with a higher gas content erupted five miles west-northwest of the town of Stabler. Several hundred foot high lava fountains were subsequently generated which occurred alongside intermittent small explosions that ejected ash. Lava flowed out of the ever-growing cinder cone in all directions at a high rate and due to the low viscosity of this basalt it quickly created a shield of black lava. As this shield volcano continued to grow, lava was primarily directed towards the south traveling 13 miles to the Columbia River where it temporarily dammed it. By the time this eruption had ended 340,000 years ago, 34 square miles had been covered in a layer of lava. Scattered eruptions followed, but by 200,000 years ago, the composition of eruptive products had changed, with all future lavas having an andesitic instead of basaltic composition. These eruptions were still mildly explosive, but created thick flows of gray lava. After 10 vents had been constructed, the area seemingly entered a temporary, highly active period around 8,000 years ago, potentially due to lingering magma left over from an initial intrusion. This magma rose to the surface and produced a Strombolian eruption in 6,000 BCE, sending bombs of lava over a several hundred meter radius and during a two-day-long eruption created a 50-foot-high cinder cone on a hillside known as the Hackamore Creek Cone. In 5700 BCE, magma began ascending underneath the summit of Bear Mountain, which at the time contained abundant groundwater. The heat from this fresh molten rock caused the groundwater to flash to steam, build in pressure, until finally it was too great that it cracked overlying rock, generating a tremendous explosion. As a plume of ash rose to a height of 20,000 feet, pyroclastic flows raced outwards, incinerating everything within a one-mile radius. Heavy ashfall subsequently occurred, with areas close to the eruption site receiving between 3 and 30 feet thick of ash. This sequence formed the 1600 foot wide and 475 foot deep Puny Creek Crater. 100 years later, another explosive eruption took place, carving out a 1900 foot wide and 200 foot deep crater. From this crater subsequently emerged a dome of andesite lava which increasingly grew in size until it overflowed the crater. Over the next nine months, andesite lava slowly progressed towards both the east and west, covering an area of two and a half square miles in gray lava. Although the West Crater Volcano has not erupted since, it statistically averages an eruption about once every 30,000 years and will erupt again. Future eruptions are likely to be mildly explosive or highly explosive, potentially progressing towards largely non-explosive andesite lava fusion after the initial eruption stage ends. As a result of these hazards, the U.S. Geological Survey designated the West Crater as a low-threat volcano. I would like to thank my new patron 01i underscore gaming for supporting this channel via our Patreon page.